Hi friends, how is it going? It's Nicole with 12 Folk Ministries and I am here with just another coffee chat with you with my sweet, sweet and dear friend, Peyton Lauder Lauderdale. She's amazing, you guys. Cannot say just enough amazing things about her and her ministry. She really is, is just a bright light. She's so positive. She's real. You can have just a real and honest conversation with her and her ministry. You guys, if you do not know about Gathering Hope, please grab your phone, grab your device and look them up right now. Follow them on social media. They are doing some amazing things just to impact the pregnancy loss community. So please check them out. But Peyton, hi. Hi, friend. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really looking forward to this conversation. I know it's kind of weird to say like, I'm, I'm so excited to talk about grief. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. It is something that I'm pretty passionate about. I'm thankful you asked me to, to visit with you about it. And um, yeah. Yeah, so let's let's just jump right in. So yes, we are we're gonna talk about grief. And I will be the first person to just be so transparent and honest and say, I'm not sure if I handled my grief very well. Or you know, this is still something that I'm still learning and walking through and growing. And I guess you could say, and even still being able to pour into people walking through grief, I still don't think that I do it well, um, but I, maybe it's just like an ever growing learning process of how to really support people and just, and to support yourself um, while you are walking through grief. So Peyton, what, if you want to just like, just jump in and just maybe start to talk about grief or how you we're able to cope with grief, really, whatever you sure. like to share to start off. Sure. That'd be awesome. Uh, I want to um, affirm you first, if that's okay, <laughs> because yeah. uh, nobody gets grief right, right? Like, we're all, it's, it's, um, it's a lifelong thing from what I'm experiencing so far. Um, I think that it is something that we will always be dealing with um, as people on this side of heaven. And it's really just something that uh, like grows over time, your relationship with grief. Sometimes I like to think of grief as, as like a person who hangs out with me. I know that kind of sounds a little creepy, but um, you know, and we go through seasons where we're really close and then we go through seasons where we walk a, a little bit more independently. And um, I, I really think that to say that you didn't handle grief well, or, or just as a person, I didn't handle grief well. What more could you expect of a person who's grieving? Yeah. Uh, I had my counselor told me one time, she goes, you cannot get an A in grief as much as you want to. Uh, <laughs> I am a, I am a high achiever. I, I want to do all the things. I want to do them all correctly. I want to do them all right. And she's like, you, you just can't. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and I would say, you know, as a, as a person going through grief counseling was probably a lifesaver for me. Mm -hmm. um, I should probably go back, <laughs> but, but I really think that it was truly, I wouldn't be the person that I am now without that. And it really helped to mold and shape me to, to the woman that I am now, who is able to be honest and transparent about grief, but also be okay and, and strong enough in, in my grief journey that I can walk alongside other people. Yeah. That's awesome. And so, so really, how did you cope, you know, with your grief? I know that this, you know, it's kind of an open-ended question and you sure. talked about counseling and therapy, but just, you know, what, what were some things that, that just really were able to just to help you? I don't think I even knew that other people held back. My grief was so open and raw and just out there that uh, I didn't, I wasn't even able to be aware that there are other people who didn't grieve that way because I was just, and as I think you should, I was super selfish. Um, and that sounds like a really harsh word to use, but it's that you should be mm -hmm. because you need to heal. 
And it's just a time to really be, it's okay for it to be just about you at that time. Um, and so I was extremely emotional. <laughs> um, I felt like I did a roller coaster uh, every other day. And, but, but that's how I needed to do it. I needed to be open and vocal and say all the things and say them just the way that I needed to without holding anything back because holding back just wasn't serving me personally well at all. Yeah. So, um, so just talking, you know, finding someone else to talk about it with, whether it's a professional or a friend, I think for verbal processors, <laughs> you know, um, just having the opportunity to talk is, is what I needed to do. And I needed to be able to freely cry when I needed to. Um, there were times where I was like on the floor of my son's room, crying on the floor and just pleading and begging with God, like, let me tap out. I need a break from this. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I would get that relief when, when it was really, really important, but, but yeah, just, just laying it all out there is how I really coped. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And, and talk to me. I would love to know your opinion about these stages of grief, you know, because there's so many things out there. I really don't think you want to ask me that question. <laughs> no, I do. I really want to know. Cause I see, you know, I see all the things it's like, there's four, there's five, there's seven. Yeah. There's I don't even know how many there are, but, uh, I think they're absolute nonsense. Okay. And, and, the, <laughs> and the, I think in the fact that they, I think that there's, um, some people who subscribe that there's an order to it. Yeah. Okay. So I think there's definitely phases of grief, but the fact that you can have all of those stages in one day mm -hmm. is a real thing. Yeah. So I could be, I don't even know what they are, <laughs> but um, I'm sure I looked it up at one time to see like, just like where I was, yeah. but you can be experiencing a flood of bargaining and what are, what are the other ones Nicole I don't even know I, I think it's like anger and maybe disbelief or denial sure um, yeah hold on yes I'm gonna look really uh, quick because yeah definitely all in one day and 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 very seasonal too so you know I I know several other women uh in in my community our community that are angry and that season lasts a very, very long time for them. Mm -hmm. We have women who, uh, to, who come to a gathering and they are just, you can see it on their face, the um, anger and disappointment and disbelief when they walk through the door. But by the time they leave, we, we've seen people's like, like their chains fall off and they realize like, this is a safe place. Other people actually do want to hear what happened. It's okay for me to talk here. It's, it's okay for me to, to grieve openly if I need to. And they could be in a different phase of grief by the time they leave a gathering. So so yeah, I'm not a huge fan of like the <laughs> grief is messy. It's mm -hmm. messy and it's not linear. That's what yeah. I have. I love it's, that. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for sharing. Okay. I looked him up. It's acceptance, depression, bargaining, anger, and denial. Yeah. I would definitely say there's, there's seasons, but if that does all happen in one day, expect the unexpected. Mm -hmm. You know, expect that you could have a day where you experience all of that. All of them. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. Appreciate you so much. Okay. I want to flip the script a little bit and just would love to know, like, so how can we support someone walking through grief? You know, because I know that that yeah. is a big question, especially in the infertility and pregnancy loss community is just like, yes. what do I say to my friend or my, or to my loved one or, 
you know, just what do I say? How can I help them while they're walking through this? I really think it is important to let the grieving person lead the way. So if you have someone, oh, I'm sorry, I've got a kitty cat here. <laughs> Real life as always. Yeah. Um, I really, I get asked this question a lot and I think that you need to let that person, if they're ready to talk about something, let them talk and listen. Don't try to like jump into the conversation. Just take a minute and listen and fully take in what they're saying. And if they're not, let them know that you're open to this conversation at a later time. It's not just, you don't want to talk about it now. Okay, we're not going to talk about it at all. Let them know there is future opportunity to have this conversation when you are ready. And if you're not ready or I'm not the right person, can I help you find the right person to talk to? Can I help you find a counselor? Can I help you find someone I might know who's been through a similar experience? It doesn't always have to be a paid professional, right? Yeah. Um, so just be open to linking that person to, to someone else besides you and don't be offended by that. You might just not be the person they need to talk to right now. So that's good. Yeah. Let the grieving person lead the way, lead the way. Mm -hmm. So good. Okay. What is your, do you have a favorite book or resource? So I have so many books. I have like a stack <laughs> of books <laughs> that, that I, I love, or I'm trying to get through. I'll read pieces of there are a few that I love to recommend. One is new to me, but not new to anybody else, which is um, Grieving the Child I Never Knew. Okay. That book, I just opened it up and I was like, no wonder everyone loves this book because it speaks to women who, who lost babies really early in pregnancy or late in pregnancy. It just doesn't matter. It's helpful to all ranges of that. Mm -hmm. um, another book I love by Lisa Turkhurst called It's Not Supposed to Be This Way. Uh, we've used that for a book club selection. And, you know, when you're leading something, you always feel like you get more out of it than anybody else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. Uh, I really loved, loved that book. It really spoke to some unfinished things in my heart. And find it, it any any griever could use that book it's not necessarily um for infertility or miscarriage or infant loss it, in fact it's not even really i don't think it's even addressed in that book so it's it's good for everyone and another book that i love loved baby by sarah philpot is a fantastic one and then my friend heather butler wrote a book called um that side of heaven and she's she follow her on instagram y'all she is <laughs> such a wealth of knowledge but in such a comforting way she's she's definitely uh, a good follow so i love i love her awesome thank you yeah thank you're you welcome. thank you okay really quick tell us about gathering hope and all of the amazing things that you guys do in um, your event coming up. So we have, we are, I don't know when this comes out, but today is, uh, today is the day we opened for general admission to Gathering Hope, and that'll be on October 2nd this year. I'm really excited about it, nervous, but excited. We'll have an in-person option. We have a couple of remote sites in, there's one in Delaware, there's one in Florida, there's one in a place I'm forgetting because I'm on, I'm on video. <laughs> um, and then we'll have a virtual option. That was our only option last year. And it went over so well. Uh, I was, we were just in the middle of everything. It was like during, during worship, I think. And I went to the back of the room and one of my board members who was helping kind of facilitate all of the technology and stuff at the back. I said, I don't feel like we can go backwards from offering this. And he goes, I'm not going to let you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, cause we were looking at the numbers and we had like 200 people watching and 
I, which I had, I was hoping like maybe 50 ladies would log on, you know, and we had 200 people watching for an hour and a half, which was beyond my expectations in a year that was really, really hard. Mm -hmm. So we'll be offering that again, uh, full access tickets get session one, which is worship and our guest speakers. And then session two, both in person and virtually, you'll be able to uh, be in a room with uh, one of our table leaders who's been trained to share about how to share her story. So she'll share her story as an example, you know, to the, everyone to let them know that this is a safe place. Uh, to talk and then the conversation just kind of flows naturally from there where women are able to share their stories and they walk away feeling so empowered by that moment. I think, I think if that's all we ever did was seat women at tables and ask them to share their stories, I would be okay with that. I love the other stuff for sure. <laughs> but I think that is, that is the most important part of what we do is that women can be heard, but also speak. And if they want to, no one's ever pressured to do that. So yeah, that's coming up in October. We have a couple of different things that we've added on since COVID. Before we got on, we talked about pivoting. Yes. <laughs> so we have an <laughs> online book club. Uh, we have a website full of resources that we were talking about, books, um, there's a list of counselors on there that we've worked with in the past and and know that those are solid people to work with. So yeah, that's kind of what's uh, in store for us. And then coming up, we actually have something called our Timely Tender Tote, which is a new program for us. It'll be available locally first, and uh, we hope to see that grow over the years. But we hope it's an answer to that question that I know you get to is what can I do for my sister or my friend who's just been through a loss? Like what, what can I do? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we hope this is a tangible answer for them. So yeah. love that. Love you. Love your ministry. You're so amazing. Please continue oh, to yeah, do. You do <laughs> we have the same, same, yeah. same heart for similar women for sure. Yes, yeah. But I'm so grateful to you, Peyton, and just in your ministry and praying for you guys. And thank you for jumping on today. Appreciate Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you for asking me. I really appreciate that. Of course.